Good evening. Nam Kelekile was turned to say to Sokala, Sengkuboye to enter gender space right here on Bomagapa TV, channel 260. This show is brought to you by the Commission for Gender Equality, which protects gender equality in South Africa. Now, to tell us more what the CGE does, let us hear from the CEO, Ms. Jamela Robertson. As we all know, the Commission for Gender Equality was established in 1996 in terms of Chapter 9 of the Constitution. Hence, we are called Chapter 9 institutions. Why were we established? And I'm now speaking about uh, all the Chapter 9s uh, in the country. Uh, as we have fought for democracy in this country, one of the things that we're fighting for is, was equal human rights, equal access to resources and opportunities in the country. And we know that historically, there were groups of peoples who were left behind, not only socioeconomically, on the basis of race, gender, uh, sexual orientation, all the groups of our societies that we call designated groups. These are the groups that uh, the system of apartheid, and even before apartheid, the system of discriminating people on the basis of their biological makeup had been embedded in our society. So when we, we achieved democracy in 1994, these were some of the factors or the key element of transformation in our country. Hence, Chapter 9 institutions were established to focus basically on that so that we try to redress the past, to make sure that we don't leave anyone uh, behind in our society, socioeconomically. Quite an informative video that we just watched from the CEO, uh, Ms. Jamela Robertson. But right here in studio, we are joined by the Eastern Cape Provincial Manager for the Commission, Mr. Ngaba Mkhwebo. Um, Mr. Mkhwebo, can you please tell us more and expand on what the Commission um, does after what we just heard from the CEO? Um, thanks, Mr. Ngaba for the opportunity and greetings to your viewers. The Commission for Gender Equality was established in terms of Section 187 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, which mandates the Commission to, to, to promote respect, attainment of gender equality. Um, as well as the Commission for Gender Equality Act Number 39 of 1996, which give the Commission powers also to make inputs into other proposed legislations or bills, including indigenous policies. The Commission is also mandated to conduct awareness or um, community empowerment in sensitizing communities around gender equality. Uh, we normally say the mandate of the Commission is too broad because we are not only looking at the um, at the domestic legislations that our government have passed, but we also look at the international instruments that our government have ratified. Mm -hmm. Those will include your Beijing Platform for Action, the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, and the SADC Protocol on 5050. Okay. So the CGE will report on these international instruments in terms of government compliance with such instruments. The CGE is also empowered to investigate both public, private, as well as government entities in terms of achieving gender equality in the Republic of South Africa. Okay. Um, now, what are some of the issues that the Commission is dealing or addressing with um, with regards to society in general? Um, the, within the Commission, there are units. We have the department that is called Publication and Information Department which is a department that is tasked solely to work directly with communities in empowering them on their rights. So we do that through outreach and public education, 
and through outreach and access to justice information sessions. And we do that through working with stakeholders or having stakeholders engagement on a certain thematic areas like gender-based violence and femicide, gender-based violence, religion and culture, as well as gender-based violence and harmful practices. And we we'll then again look at the issues such as women empowerment when we do such work within the Department of Publication and Information. Okay. But again, the Commission for Gender Equality has a, has a legal mandate of protection in terms of the rights that are being violated in terms of gender discrimination. So you will have then a legal unit that takes complaints directly from the public or investigate complaints on own accord mm -hmm. or investigate complaints that are referred to the Commission for Gender Equality that pertains to a violation of the rights on the basis of gender. So that's how we, we, we exercise our mandate in terms of the two respective departments. But again, we have the research department, which is uh, solely responsible for conducting either desktop research or, or research studies that are commissioned by the commission on issues that talks to gender equality in the Republic of South Africa, which then those reports get to be reported to parliament because the commission reports to parliament directly mm -hmm. through the commissioners where they report on the findings and the recommendations of such research report that has been conducted by the Commission for Gender Equality. Okay, but Nama, I hear you talking about parliament, but besides government, mm -hmm. what other stakeholders um, do you um, work with within the commission? And what are the issues that are um, pertinent or mm -hmm. uh, dominating um, here in the Eastern Cape? Um, we, we not normally work with government per se, mm -hmm. But, but we work with everybody uh, for, as, as a Commission for Gender Equality. Our mandate um, in terms of the CG Act, it says we must work with all the like-minded organizations. Mm -hmm. But it also says we need to work with the sister chapter nine institutions. Mm -hmm. So there is a sort of a referral system where any complaints that is being lodged in the CGE, if it does not fall on our mandate, we can't fold our arms. Okay. We have then refer that either to the Office of the Public Protector or to the Southern Human Rights Commission or to the commission with a long name that we normally call CRL Commission, mm -hmm. Commission on Linguistic and Cultural Practices. So we'll normally refer such complaints to the sister chapter nine institutions. Mm -hmm. So we work with everybody in the commission, including private sector, including civil society organizations. Some of the issues that are prominent in the Eastern Cape when it comes to gender is, is, is issues such as your gender-based violence, harmful traditional practices, which include early child forced marriages mm -hmm. and forced marriages, mm -hmm. as well as the issues around widowers' rights, which some of them face a number of challenges when they are in the mourning periods. Uh, because of their husband has passed away. Um, but also the, the commission has been conducting um, awareness sessions okay. as well as analyzing the integrated development plans, which we call ITPs from the municipality. Mm -hmm. We have a project that we call gender mainstreaming, where we engage municipalities and see to it their IDPs are engendered, mm -hmm. where we administer a, a, an audit tool, which we call a gender mainstreaming audit tool, so that municipalities could respond on issues such as women empowerment, could respond on services that they render, whether such services that they render are disaggregated in terms of gender. Okay, and okay, but never, let's just hold it right there. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see at home, guys, there's a lot to unpack, um, but please stay tuned um, as we will be discussing more and more things that the commission does for us and our society. Thank you. The importance of research under the CGE mandate is to generate knowledge on uh, nuanced gendered uh, ills that are affecting and impeding under uh, uh, impeding gender transformation in the country. 
and the principle of impartiality of the CGE enables for commission to undertake uh, empirical research uh, in compliance with the qualitative research uh, ethical principles that enable for the revealing of the hidden critical gendered issues uh, within the South African society. Welcome back. You are still watching Gender Space right here on Bumagapa TV with me, Noba Tembukan. We just viewed a clip explaining the research mandate of the commission. And joining us here in studio to speak more on this is Naledi Selebano. Welcome, Naledi. Thank you. Now, Naledi, um, of the research reports that were released in 2020 and 2021, there's two that I would like us to focus on the One Step Forward um, report, and also the Emergency Response Action Plan. Now, can you tell us what the findings and recommendations were on these projects? Yes, um, thank you. So yes, both uh, studies were mm -hmm. part of the broader theme on gender-based violence and femicide. Okay. And it has been the strategic focus of the CGE since inception to monitor and assess all country responses and initiatives geared towards uh, combating gender-based violence. Um, I'll start with the first report um, that deals with, um, which is titled rather, One Step Forward and One Step Backward. Mm -hmm. um, the purpose of that study was to assess um, the key outcomes of the Presidential Summit on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide mm -hmm. that took place in 2018. Uh, part of the key outcomes was that uh, the country should establish a national council on gender-based violence and femicide with the role to coordinate all efforts that were found to be fragmented at the time in that um, there are many initiatives however different government departments are, 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 are implementing them as well as civil society and other key role players mm -hmm. so the idea was for the county to have a coordinated effort with one institution that oversees um, all action plans and programs that deal with gender-based violence. Okay. So what the study found was that um, within the six months that the structure was supposed to have come into fruition, um, the role players that were given that mandate had failed um, to, to bring that structure into fruition. Mm -hmm. So in the end, after six months, there was no structure and there still isn't since there are challenges that were encountered uh, by the key role players. Um, and the CGE from that um, recommended that the process needs to be expedited, seeing that um, GBV remains unabated in the country mm -hmm. and such coordinated efforts with um, funding that is set aside would be key um, for us to see progress in our work. Mm -hmm. In terms of the second report on the ERAP, um, that uh, project, um, the CGE conducted the study um, to find out um, whether government and other implementing institutions were able to um, reach the targets that were set up um, on the implementation of the ERAP. The ERAP had indicators and a set of um, outcomes that were expected to come about within six months of implementation. Mm -hmm. And what the study found was that um, only about 12% of the targets were met and that a dismal 64% um, of the targets were missed. So the CGE recommended that it would be important that the implementation of those outstanding um, targets be prioritized in the following year as well as uh, be included in the national strategic plan going forward, mm -hmm. seeing that the NSP is uh, a program or a, stra uh, a strategy that the country will be implementing for the next 10 years um, in the country. Okay. Now, from a research perspective, what would you say is a issue that perpetuates gender inequality um, in our society? Okay. I'll say that at the core of inequalities within um, society is this monster patriarchy. And oftentimes, patriarchy is understood as a foreign concept, as if it, it's laying there somewhere. And yet patriarchy expresses itself through our culture, our religion, and traditions. 
um, it finds itself through our ways of life. Mm. I'll make an example in terms of culture. When a, a bride is being prepared, for example, um, and you know, elderly women come um, um, to give her you know, rules mm. on how to conduct herself in her marriage, she's usually told that um, your body belongs to your husband. That when you say you have a headache, it only affects this part of your body and not this one which robs women um, their right to bodily autonomy, their right to say no when do, they do not want to engage in sexual activities with their partner. And this contributes uh, broadly then to the issue of gender-based violence. I'll make another example. Um, it has been found in research that um, girls, for example, tend to choose um, subjects that uh, are not um, you know, uh, linked to, for example, um, the sciences and technology or mathematics. Mm. And that is usually because those are seen as uh, male um, subjects. Those are male careers. Women are expected to do, um, you know, to, to, to choose streamlines that have to do with um, you know, nursing, for example, and teaching, which are undervalued in society because they are seen to be feminine or, or, or women orientated. And again, you'll find that women struggle, for example, to run for office when we speak of politics mm -hmm. because of the dual role that women are expected to play. Um, we all know that politics are cutthroat. Um, you, you need a lot of time mm -hmm. and energy to invest in, into that career. But oftentimes, uh, oftentimes women find themselves uh, be expected to play uh, domestic roles mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. and then struggle to find the balance. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they become discouraged. Hence, we'll find that men are the ones who usually come up. It's, I, not, yeah. you know, it's not that it's inherent mm -hmm. in men that they mm -hmm. are born leaders. I think a, a lot of the times it's issues that we take for granted, yeah. um, which are actually uh, perpetuators of gender inequality in our sure. society. Wow, guys, there's still a lot to unpack um, when it comes to um, the work that the Commission does. Please stay tuned as we come back with more after the ad break. Welcome back from the ad break. You are still watching Gender Space right here on Bumagaba TV. And back in studio, we are joined once again by Uput Ngeba, where we will be addressing the GBV hotspots. Um, Uput Ngeba, um, the Minister of Police had highlighted um, Eastern Cape Province as a GBV hotspot um, when he was releasing his um, crime statistics. What work is the Commission doing in this area and also, what are the problems that you have noted as a commission in the Eastern Cape? Uh, thanks, Amatil. The Commission for Gender Equality, under the stewardship of the commissioners, have held public investigating hearings where the then former commissioner, Kesha um, and including the minister, appeared in front of the commissioners around the GPV and also around the issue of the lack of access of rape kits or non-availability of rape kits in the police stations. Um, subsequent to that, the commissioners have then decided that they are going to do an oversight visit in all the 30 hotspot police stations. In the province of the Eastern Cape, we sampled um, and, 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 and almost five police stations, uh, including Lusikisik, which is a hot spots police station on rape, Umtata, which is a hot spots station on contact crimes that will include uh, murder um, and, and assault. Um, we have also a vi uh, done a visit to Kwazakele police station under a Kabeha, um, under Nelson Mandela Bay municipality. Um, we have also uh, conducted self visits to Ado Police Station, which is also still falls under Nelson Mandela Bay Metro Municipality, and including um, the police station under Sarapatman District, Ekhraf Um We were not only focusing on the hotspot per se in the Eastern Cape, but we wanted also to check 
in terms of the rural communities, because Ado is more rural police station, Kraf Renat is more rural and farming communities. How are they help or get assistance by, by the police station? We were also, when we were there at the police station, we were checking the availability of the rape kits. It's no use to have the rape kits that are expired because they are not going to be used. So we we're checking whether the police stations do comply with their own standard operating procedure in terms of making sure that the rape kits are available, readily available in all the police stations that we visited. We were also looking at the victim-friendly rooms in the police stations, whether the victim-friendly rooms in the police station, they do take into consideration the rights of the victims, right to confidentiality, as well as when they are there, they do get professional services if they have um, maybe undergo a, a traumatic experience, whether they have any people that do cancel them. Um, the, 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 the visit to this police station were an enabling us as a CGE to identify some of the challenges that are being faced by police stations themselves in, in, in order to report those to, to, to Parliament. Because we could have discovered in some of these police stations there was an issue of lack of human capacity. Um, police stations such as Lusikisiki, where there is a high number of rape, um, there was an issue around vehicles that are being deployed or given to, 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 to that particular station, which do not response to the terrain of that particular community. But again, we need to take into cognizance that the, the issue that there is high number of GBV cases that are reported, it can be a negative as well as a positive. Because if, if it, it was saying that there is OR TAM, which is Lusikisi, is a presidential hotspot, which then means most of the programs around GPV are run in that particular district. Mm -hmm. So which then means people get empowered and they know their rights and they start mm -hmm. reporting. So mm -hmm. it's both negative and a negative. We should not take it as a something that is um, it's, it's not supposed to be, mm -hmm. um, because we should be glad that people are reporting mm -hmm. cases of GPV. But what then if they have reported such cases? Okay, and then highlighting on your um, GBV cases, because mm -hmm. we know that um, children get molested, mm -hmm. um, uh, women get um, physically assaulted mm -hmm. um, uh, by their partners, mm -hmm. and also there's discriminate discriminatory crime um, against the LGBTQI community. Um, what is your message as the commission to the people of the Eastern Cape regarding these issues? Um, we, we normally say people should not be stand biased when they see cases of gender-based violence. People should not keep silence. They must report such cases. If they do not get an assistance from the authorities that they have reported that, they have the right to report such cases to the Commission for Gender Equality. Mm -hmm. For us then to follow it up, what had happened, why they were ignored when they were reporting such cases, uh, if they were ignored, so that we, we have that particular mandate of investigating any gender-related complaints as a commission. As a result, one, one of the interventions that the province has made also again was the fact that um, the, the former commissioner, Mamunjinga, was also one of the commissioners who were called for public investigating hearings on the cases and the rape kits and the issues of DNA in the province of the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bugnaba, for joining us. There's clearly a lot to still unpack when it comes to the province and what um, the commission does, not only for, for the province, but nationally. Um, please um, stay tuned as we will continue these conversations on a weekly basis. And for you viewers at home, if you want to get more information on these reports, please go to the website www cge.org.za also if you have any gender any gender related complaints you can contact the commission on its toll free number which is 0800 007 709 as i said stay tuned next week same time same place same channel as we bring you another installment of gender space good night <laughs>